So I'm trying to uh, do time lapses of a lot of the random hacking I do just to sort of keep track of what I'm doing. Here I'm removing the OLEDs from a bunch of controller boards that were donated to Resistor. Unfortunately, they're basically front ends for giant LiPos, which we don't have. Uh, it was a little bit of a challenge to get the boards off because I needed to desolder them from the front side and remove the headers because the um, unfortunately the pin holes on the carrier board were a little too small and it was just impossible to wrench them free while keeping the headers on. So I just had to replace all the headers. Uh, I used one of Adafruit's lovely libraries to uh, to drive them. They're just SSD 13 and 6 based uh, controllers and um, worked beautifully. So we have, uh, I think I did 10 of these in this batch. I think we've got like probably another 20 or 30 boards. Uh, so if you happen to come by Resistor, you are free to grab one. They're up on the um, foam board on the side of the vending machine. Um, so that probably took me about 30 minutes, about three minutes to solve each show LED, so not too bad. I had a little uh, subboard from this printer that had a FFC attached to it that was uh, a little too short, so I needed to uh, switch out the cable for a longer one, which I had also salvaged from another printer I'd taken apart just the other day. Uh, almost all of these have one millimeter pitches, so it was pretty easy. And so um, there was no connector on here. It was soldered directly to the board. So my first thought was I would just try to solder directly to the board with the um, with the other cable. But what I hadn't realized is that um, basically the leads on the cable that had been soldered to the board had been stripped. I should have realized this, that the uh, insulation really can't handle more than the ADC. You can just uh, put heat on the back of that and expect it to work. So what I had to do was uh, snip it down and take a a razor uh, and just sort of scrape away on both sides until I had some free leads that I could just solder directly to the board. This was a bit of a pain in the butt, but at least I know how to do it now. Um, I think in the future, you know, the right solution would probably be just to solder a connector on top of that footprint and not try to do it this way. Uh, this worked. Uh, I feel like I have sort of technique. I'm also very proud of myself as using a, for using a C-clamp as a pair of helping hands. Um, but it did give me the extra about two or three inches I needed to get this installed on the board I was trying to put together. And in a second, I'll actually put here, this is the guts of a printer I'm setting up for a class, and there's the extension. The third project here is a little FFC pass-through and breakout board that I uh, threw together. Uh, it's not a great design. I did it in a rush, but it seems to work. I think uh, my next pass, I'll make sure that the pin headers and the FFC connectors end up on the same side of the board so I can uh, do the whole thing in a, on a hot plate or in a, in a reflow of an all at one go. As it is, I had to reflow the FFC connectors and then flip it and then manually add the, uh, the pin headers on the other side. Um, I could also make the board smaller. But uh, this is only 16 pins. I'm probably going to have to do like a 20 or 30 pin one at some point to handle some bigger boards. But the nice thing about these is you can just use part of it. And uh, this should make uh, it a lot easier for me to diagnose and uh, reverse engineer various modules that I'm, I'm working with right now.